mind and just go over. Do me a favor. Go over chapter nine. Chapter nine is very simple. Talk about special systems. Like they said, you guys are familiar with rigid EMP conduit, PVC conduit. We talked about these type of conduits and cables. Now, since you're going to go to the next level of design, you need to be aware of other wiring methods approved by the code. So this time, the little chapter talk about other wiring methods that you can use. Everybody's okay with that? Other wiring methods that that you can use. Um, so let's let's talk uh, about a few things. The other wiring methods, or special, they call them special systems. The first system that we talk about, we're going to talk about guys, is raceways. There are two types. There's the metallic raceways and the non-metallic raceways. So we'll talk about raceways, metallic, non-metallic. Multi-outlet assembly, the use and the installation of multi-outlet assembly. Right in the front of you guys, you have a multi-outlet assembly. We'll talk a few things about use uh, of multi-outlet assembly. The loading for multi-outlet assembly, you guys have done that with me, right? You guys remember when we said you have a multi-outlet assembly, uh, if it's simultaneously used, we give uh, 180 volt amp per foot. If it's non-simultaneously used, we give 180 volt amp per five feet. We already know the loading, and you guys have done it with me. So they can install floor outlet, then we're going to have floor, underfloor outlet, uh, underfloor um, raceways, guys. We'll talk about the outlets and how they put it together. And install branch circuit for computers. Talk a little bit about brand circuit for computers in this in this uh, project. Um, so that's kind of the, the object of this class. Okay, so I'll uh, I'll flash the code about this one, guys. So article, there's an article that talks about metallic raceways, metallic or non-metallic raceways. A couple of things about them um, installed as an extension to existing electrical systems. Here's the article that talks about them. I'm going to give you a quick tour of these articles. Raceways, guys, are a good application. Extending an existing system is one good application. Uh, and also, if you take a big chunk of wires from point A to point B, it's a great application. You're looking at a circuit mounted right away here. You can put inside the circuit right away. Some of them, you can put uh, outlets in them. Others, you don't put outlets in them. So, surface mounted raceway. Metallic, non-metallic, where would I use them? If I want to put a chunk, take a chunk of wires from point A to point B, that would be a great application. Here's one. Suppose I have a, a load here and a point here, guys, and right in between them, I'm going to take um, I'm going to take 30 conductors, 30 carrying carrying conductors. If here's a raceway, surface mounted raceway, guys, that I took from this panel, this panel, panel A into panel B, and in one surface mounted raceway, I pulled 30 conductors, metallic. Here's the advantage of pulling this. Do I need to, to derate if I pull 30 carrying, carrying conductors? How many conductors, if you put them in a conduit, if you put conductors in a conduit, if you put more than three hops, you need to derate, right? Take this advantage for surface mounted raceways, metallic surface uh, uh, surface rated uh, or surface mounted raceways. If you put up to 30, you do not have you do not have to derate. Up to 30 conductors. Would that be an advantage over raceways over uh, conduits? That's one of the advantages for metallic wires, with some except with some uh, restrictions on that. So that's a good advantage for using it. So if I want to take uh, 30 branch circuits from point A to point B, uh, say 50 feet or 20 feet, that could be a, an application for it. Cool. I will give you guys a tour of these articles in a little less than a second here when we talk about them. Okay. So can you, everybody can see this advantage for the metallic raceway only, up to 30, no derating. Uh, where would I use them? All these are dry location only. Though you can buy them, we're rated for wet location, so that most of the, most of these application for dry location only, like EMT, like uh, EMT. I guess you can use it also outside. Uh, how many conductors you can fit on these? Uh, the size and the number of conductors depend upon the manufacturers. So, how many conductors you can fit on them, and what's the size of the largest conductor that you can put in a raceway that's specified by the manufacturer? Can I have thumbs up, Chad? Manufacturer recommendation. Um, okay, now, can I splice inside the raceways? Everybody knows what the raceways, they have a cover, and you can open the cover. 
So every time you can open a cover, can you open the cover in a, of, a, of an EMP conduit? Does the EMP conduit has a cover in it? Rigid, PVC, all the conduits, no cover. The advantage of the, uh, the raceways is they're covered. They're tr like trunks. You can put, you can open them like this, put all your conductors, look at that vent, you put them all your conductors, and then put the cover on them, right? You can cover them. So that's, a, that's an advantage over, over the raceways, right? Now, can I splice? Always, Andrew, if you can have access to the splice, then yes, you can. Can, if it has a cover and I can open the cover, then can I splice? Yes, Chad, if, as long as you have access to it. But when you splice, when you splice, when I do my splicing here, make sure it doesn't fill, here's my splice, all the conductors going do it splice. Make sure this doesn't fill more than 75%. Uh, this number, 75%, guys, when you book this junk chunk of splicing, make sure it's not filling more than 75%. By the way, 75, Jeff, is typical for every other application. Take this, Darren. If I have a panel like this, can I splice in this panel? Can I bring this switch inside the panel, splice it to wires, and take it to the wire? Can I do that in America? Yes. In Jerusalem, no. The inspector kicked my butt many times when I did that. You can't do it there. So I guess that's what Chad used to do. I used to go hide him behind the wire. Hide the wire nuts behind the wire, try to push them as deep as, as you can so they don't see him, and sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So I can't splice in the panel. The only time I cannot splice, I cannot fill more than 70% of that gutter space. Same thing here. You can't fill more than 70% of it. That's including the conductors and the splice in one location. Thumbs up, Chad, for the splicing. Okay, um, so that's my race. We are available in various, um, uh, very, uh, these guys, they come in various sizes, various shapes, guys, typically. Here's, a, here's a, an example of a residential application of a raceway where um, existing building, and you need to put existing, you can't fish it. So your option is, in a, a concrete wall like this, your option is either to go through the block, right, or to put EMP conduit that looks ugly a little bit, right? You can put EMP conduit or PVC or rigid, or remember, this is a fair another option. Or to put the surface mounted race with that mold, they call it a mold, and it comes with all the hardware, guys. Here's your switch going all the way up. Look at the hardware. The angle, here's an extension box all the way down to my line. So that's one application for it. Honestly, it's an ugly application. Not many people use it. Um, the retrofit, add more things, make it look a little bit better than EMP conduit. Thumbs up, Chad, for this one application for it. Okay, so that's my application. Here's another application, guys, where you can have same thing. We have a flat elbow. It comes, these raceways come with a complete hardware. Everybody understand that one? Complete boxes, complete covers, complete angles and splitters and a whole hardware that goes with it. I'm sure if you go to Home Depot, you can buy them as a mold, right? Um, here's my receptacle, the box that goes to receptacle. Look at the angle. Um, all the boxes that you can do, you can extend an existing circuit. If I have a receptacle in the wall here, I have a receptacle right here, and I want, I want to make another, another receptacle right here, and I'm too lazy to drill holes through the wall, I put an extension here, put the um, surface model raceway, and put a box here, and it add another receptacle, okay? So that's another application for these surface mounted or non surface mounted raceways. Okay, that's it about these. Multi outlet assembly. Multi outlet assembly, guys, you install them in places where there's a lot of consumption of power, for example, right where Aaron is sitting and Carrie and Andrew, you guys are plugging and Darren, you're plugging three laptops right now. You need at least three outlets to plug it, uh, four outlets to plug your four uh, laptops. And sometimes if you're charging your, your, uh, phone or something. So that could be a uh, uh, heavy use of electricity. A multi-outlet assembly sitting right in the front of you is a good application for this. Dry location only typically. We don't go for multi-outlet assembly guys. You don't go through the walls with multi-outlet assembly, right? So that's a multi-outlet assembly. Think of it as a special type, Jeff, of raceway. Special type of surface mounted raceway. Why it's special? Because they put outlet uh, receptacle inside it, inside it. Can I have a thumbs up, Chad? Okay, 
So that's um, so it allows a degree of flexibility for installation and, and practically suited to heavy use or heavy use areas or heavy use areas. Um, I don't know if we're going to talk about the load in this one, uh, multi-out assembly. In the project that we have, guys, they're having a multi-outlet assembly in the insurance office, so they can plug all these equipment there. Um, it accommodates the power data equipment, the power for the data equipment and the security. That's just in the project that we have. Uh, receptacle for multi-outlet assembly. Also, you can put inside the multi-outlet assembly GFCI, isolated ground receptacle, surge protection. Um, you're looking at that right in the front of you guys, you can get them in any shape or form. You can get them split where you can have phone and data split with a divider in one side, the other side will have GFCI. So you can get them in a lot of applications, as you know. Here's a good example. A look at how the outlet is. So it is a surface, it's like exactly a surface mounted raceway, metallic or non-metallic, but what's inside it? The boxes, the devices come pre manufactured inside that surface mounted raceway. Any comments, guys, any questions? I can have it with data as well as, as high voltage, different voltage, different receptacles. Um, the one that you guys have in front of you is rated probably for 20 amps and have how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten receptacles, 20 amps, um, plugged in. Hopefully we have a 20 amp circuit and done. Okay, so that's uh, that's my multi-out assembly. Like I said, you can have a phone. Can, I don't know if you guys can see the divider here. You can have a low voltage, low voltage section and high voltage section inside the same thing, high voltage. Loading for uh, loading for the multi-out assembly, I will review it. For every one foot, you have 180 volt amp. And also for every one foot, you have, for every five feet, Five feet, you have 180 volt. This is simultaneously used. Uh, simultaneously used. I don't want to spell simultaneously. You guys remember that? If it's simultaneously used, we give it one volt at one foot, 180 volt amp. Remember that what we did in, in our project? So this is, you guys have done calculation. This is directly coming from here. Um, Okay, and then you can apply the derating factor for it. Remember that first 10 kVA, leave him alone, higher than 10 kVA, chop him off. So that's what this is doing. Yeah. An insurance office uh, project that we have has all this information, all this stuff for uh, connected loads, uh, total non-continuous capacity, um, and then you do the derating factor. And this is where you can do the derating factor. Can I have thumbs up chat that we know? how to add load into the multi-out assembly and how to apply the derating factor, which is a seven, a 10K, 100% higher than 10K, um, 50%. Can I have thumbs up? Cool, okay, good, we've done that for our load calculation. So that's just a quick review here. Um, receptacle must be spaced 18 inches. That's what it says in the multi-out assembly. I don't think they're spaced 18 inches in that one. I think it goes by the, recommend the manufacturer recommendation most of the time. Um, all receptacle or one phase connected. So this is just a couple of ways of doing it. Look at this. Here's a multi-out assembly, three phase multi-out assembly. Can you guys see that? I can bring uh, one, two, three, four, five, five receptacles. I don't know if you guys can, five receptacles on phase A and another five receptacle on phase B and a third five receptacle on phase C. That's one way of doing a three phase multi-outlet assembly, right? The better way, is to actually stagger them. You can bring phase A, B, C. Can you guys see that? Here's phase A, phase B, phase C, phase A, phase B, phase C, phase A, phase B, phase C, and you keep going. This will be pre-wired for you if it's a three-phase multi-outlet assembly. Which one is the best? This one is the best. Because if Jamie likes to sit with Brian here and chat with each other, they probably sit next to each other. They'll plug in in the outlet next to each other, right? Yeah, that will work out for you. <laughs> And, and, then, uh, and then they will be using different circuits. Versus here, if you sit next to each other, plug here and here, what do you do? You're plugging it in one phase, okay? Which one of them is right? Both of them are right. Which one is better? The bottom one is better. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? That's exactly how we wire circuits. 
I can't believe, Aaron, my friend, please do not leave Dunwoody without understanding how we take a three phase circuit, multi wire grand circuit three phase, and wire receptacle. Can I have fun? This is very important, guys. Because a lot of people get confused. How, what, what are you doing here? We're sharing a neutral between three phases, and we're picking receptacle between every phase and neutral. Everybody understand that? Doesn't matter if it's a multi out assembly or lights in the ceiling or anything else. This could be light for all practical reasons. Like what you did guys with me, probably most likely you're going to have multi-outlet multi uh, circuit. Multi, um, what do you call it? Multi-wire, branch circuit. Um, this is just talk about the communication system in the commercial building that we have guys. Uh, consists of two separate installations um, for the telephone system. And the commercial building will consist of two separate installation raceway. Uh, electric conductor will install on empty conduits. So what? Um, here's what they're talking about. Probably Darren, you're familiar with that one. When we have uh, low voltage systems, guys, the electrical contractors come and they put the box and the conduit all the way out and they leave. Then the low voltage contractors typically they come and pull their conductors inside the installed conduit by the contractor and put their device. That's typically the the division, that's what they're talking about here, is the contractor will put the boxes and the con Why do you guys think the contractor will put the boxes electrical? Because they're good at bringing conduits and bringing conduits and mounting conduits and boxes. The low voltage contractor comes to a box already installed peer specification, pull your conductors, CAT5, um, phone line, um, uh, coaxial cable, bring it in there and put whatever low voltage device you want there. Okay, uh, so that's basically what they're saying in this in this particular one. Okay, so that's um, all right. Let me. Okay, so communication allowed to. Here's what they're. This is a suggestion. They're allowing 2,500 volt um, for the communication system. That's the the circuit that's going to feed the communication server. So long story short, for us, what we, what you guys what you're gonna do with me yesterday? What did you guys do for low voltage uh, lighting panel? You circuit it with a dedicated 20 amp circuit. Same thing for the low voltage for the fire alarm. We're gonna give a dedicated circuit for a fire alarm. We're gonna give a dedicated circuit for the communication system. So that will account for 24, um, 2500 volt amp, design wise. When we design the communication system, guys, we design it based on RCL 800. We'll talk about communication not next week, the week after. It's coming. Uh, raceways are used under for light wiring. The raceways, when you put a raceway, I don't want to talk communication now, but when you have um, a CAT5 going up the ceiling, the CAT5 have to be either plenum rated ceiling, because this ceiling is plenum rated ceiling. I don't think it is, but. Um, if it's a plenum rated ceiling, it has to be a plenum rated ceiling, or you have to put it in an EMP conduit. The, now, is there any difference between installing a conduit, guys, for a lighting circuit and a phone, a phone uh, line? No, there's no difference between EMP here. I could have been installing um, a phone line inside the EMP, or a lighting circuit or receptacle circuit. Lighting circuit or receptacle circuit. Install the communication system, and typically what they do. Uh, what they do, guys, for the communication circuit, they install EMP conduit, more, almost all the application, square box with three quarter of an inch. Square box, three quarter of an inch, put them there, and then they'll take it from there, right? Square box, you put a square box with a three quarter of an inch and leave it for the low voltage contractor to pull your conductors in and put their devices. It could be EMP typically, but ENT is also a good application. Remember the ear, nose, and throat doctor? The ENT, anybody knows where, where this kind would be used? Highly corrosive environment. Because you don't want to put steel, highly corrosive, this is non-metallic. Electrical non-metallic conduit is another option. Um, yes. Um, so two meters can be used. Uh, floor outlets. For floor outlets, guys, for floor outlet, now this is raceways. We talked about the raceways. Now, if you what what happened if you want to put floor outlets? You guys in our project, we have floor outlets, right? Remember the floor outlets? You have two options for floor outlets. Option number one, you use PVC or ENT with PVC uh, uh, device boxes in the concrete, embedded in the concrete. That's option number one, right? 
um, option number one with, with devices. Option number two is to use a predetermined underfloor raceway approved by the NEC code book right in here. That's kind of a top notch under um, underfloor raceways. We'll talk about them a whole instead of using PVC and and PVC boxes and conduits, you use a whole complete system. Okay, so let's look at uh, the system underfloor raceways. Um, so you can provide power um, and communication outlets in, in docks, junction boxes for power communication, fittings. Um, here's what they're talking about. This is called underfloor raceways, underfloor raceways. Can you have thumbs up, Chad? Underfloor raceways. This is what you guys did with me, Andrew. Uh, my friend, when you remember that J box that you put next to the open office in the floor and you brought three circuits to it, that's exactly what you did. And one way of doing that J box, and when you guys brought circuit two, four, and six right here, so his will be one, two, three, and his will be my neutral, and I'm going to have one, one three, we're asking for three neutrals there, and we also ask for three, for two grounds. You guys remember that? So here's ground one, ground two, neutral, and neutral, and neutral, and then phase A, B, and C. Phase A, phase B, and phase C. Here's a three-phase circuit coming in the underground docks. That's exactly what you guys did for the project. And you circuit them with two, six, and four, two, four, six, right? Three phase. It comes to a box like this. This could be a J box or a device box. So you can, right there in this box, guys, you can either um, tie to it, and tie it to the, um, uh, have a, a cable, put these in a cable, have an adapt and attach a cable to it and pull all these conductors tied to the furniture like we did in our project. Or you can have a receptacle in one receptacle fit from circuit uh, two here and move up here, one receptacle fit from circuit uh, uh, four and one receptacle fit from circuit six and so forth. Can you have thumbs up, Chad? We understand how this system works. What's the disadvantage of this? Let me tell you about the disadvantage of this. If you put, unlike raceways, remember that metal uh, surface raceways, if you put up to 30, you don't have to do it. 30 hots can be inside a surface mounted raceway and you don't have to do it. If you put them underground, you put more than three, what do you need to do? Do it. So they treat them exactly like a conduit. And you can imagine why. Anybody knows why? These are concrete embedded. Where the heck is the heat is gonna go? There's no place for the heat to go. Embedded in concrete, it's as bad as ha having it in an EMP conduit where you don't, with, with, with the heat is going to be trapped for the most part inside the conduit. Surface mounted raceway, guys, because it has a cover, the heat will escape from it. So they allow you to put more conductors there. It's all about the heat when it comes how many conductors. Okay, the rating after, if you have more than three carrying, carrying conductor, you have to start the rate, exactly like any other conduit. That's kind of a drawback. The advantage is all your system is underground. Two things. I can have two sections, guys. I can have one for low voltage and one for high voltage. When they say high voltage and low voltage here, I can have one for my phone data, and the other one is for uh, uh, 241, two, uh, 208, 120 system. When we go to Halberg, and you stick your head for your eat pizza first, and you stick your head under all these furniture that they have, I'm sure you guys have seen it in your offices, you're going to have liquid tight flexible metallic conduit coming out of a floor box and tied to the equipment. And that cable has two sections, one carrying the power and the other one carrying the low voltage. And all the furniture, the uh, office furniture is actually getting from one cable to power and, low, and, uh, and communication and port. Communication and data. Any comments, any questions guys about this? You can go directly from the, uh, this is receptacle panel here. Okay, you see you can directly go. What's the drawback carry of this system? Expensive. A lot of coordination between you and the concrete contractor. Because you're gonna put them in and the concrete contractor is gonna go put the concrete around there. So expensive, a lot of coordination. Versus, versus what? Versus the cheap way of doing this business. Here you go, you're looking at it right here. If I want to bring a receptacle right in the middle of it, here's the cheap way, right? Power pole, start from the top, there's the J box at the top, bring all the one or two circuits, low voltage and high voltage two sections, bring them down here and tie to the equipment. That's the solution for uh, underfloor um, raceways. Any comments, any questions? Does it make sense? No? Yes? 
Okay, so that's uh, your under floor raceways. Here's, um, and I'm gonna just go over these fittings, guys. This is the fittings that you can use for boxes and devices. Uh, floor boxes, you can have a metallic or non-metallic floor boxes. Um, can be installed using approved raceways. Um, some boxes may be installed in correct heights. So you can go read uh, through these. Some non-metallic boxes, you can, uh, you can put them there. Here's the hardware that goes with it. You guys, if you walk into a certain areas, Here's another application where if you want to use a box and a conduit. Here's a box that you can use. That's a different application, a uh, floor box. You can put the PVC conduits right in here, and you and this will be your receptacle installed in the middle of the floor. Look at the hardware that comes with it, guys, and I'm not going to go through all the things from the box body into the inner ring into all the way until you have the cover, and look at the receptacle, the cover for the receptacle, and the cap for the whole thing. And all this, and then you cut, you can cut this one, you can adjust this one if it's too high after the uh, more the concrete, you can cut it, adjust it. So that's another method of bringing a receptacle, either underfloor raceway or a box and a conduit. Can I have a thumbs up, Chad? You're gonna use these sparingly. Why? Expensive. A lot of coordination. I'm gonna bring a conduit from here, guys. And the conduits from here on the ground, conduits, the conduits could be going all over. And you're going to dump concrete to the top of them. So there's some coordination going on. So this is method number two. I have a box and a conduit, PVC conduit, or ENT conduit typically. Or I can use the method that we just talked about here, which is this method, which has its own boxes and old hardware. Uh, look at them. They're not conduits. They are special the channels basically, raceways. Okay, so these are be aware that they exist in the market. Be aware that these exist in the market. The last thing, guys, on this chapter talks about fire alarm system. Uh, and I will talk in details about fire alarm system, guys, next, not next week, the week after. Fire alarm system starts by a fire alarm panel. Then you have smoke detectors, pulse stations, announcing air telescopes, um, and all these are going to be coming with. If from Article 760. We'll talk about this one when we when when we go over it. Okay, I want to show you a couple of pictures here before I, I let go. Um, okay, so that that's it basically. So I have in this here's an, a good example, guys, of uh, a good example of a raceway. I don't know if you see Andrew. I see the cover here. You put your conductors inside or over here, and then you put your cover right on top of it. Um, metallic or non-metallic, here's all the hardware that comes with it. We looked at this, couple of applications, high voltage, low voltage sections, wiring. Um, here's another application where you can put guys uh, for the low voltage systems. Remember we said uh, for low voltage you can have a square box here, an EMT or ENT, leave them open for the electrical contract, low voltage contractors to, um, low voltage contractors to pull low voltage system in them. I don't know if you can see, here's a box. This is going to be a phone line, and I'm putting a wire here to pull a fish wire and a conduit in the concrete and leaving it for the low voltage contractor to pull them. Can you guys see that? Everybody can see that? In the, this is typical between stories where you have a, a you have PVC or EMT conduit pulled with boxes waiting for the low voltage contract to pull their system in it. Okay, here's the underfloor raceways, a complete system. Look at the support that you could you put on them, the boxes, junction boxes, device boxes, and so forth. Um, here's different boxes that, that you can put to put devices in them. Here's what you can put inside these boxes. Here's how the, and I'm not going to get into the details, here's step by step how to build the system. Uh, Darren, did you guys, anybody install any of these? This is, you did install them? Okay. Here's how you set your level, the box floor, and I'm not going to go all these steps. You can level them. All the way you put, can you guys see how you put your conduits inside them all the way until you bore the concrete? Um, here's another way. This is using a surface raceways. Uh, you can use, um, uh, well, use all, or, or conduits. Here you're using a conduit. And you can see, I don't know if you guys can see, if it's too high after you put the concrete, if it was too high, you come and cut it. You can adjust it. So that's allow you to adjust, and then you put the rest of the, uh, the boxes inside them. It's just step by step how to do them. Okay. 
any comments, any questions, guys, about the two methods of underground? You either have a box and a conduit or under, under, under floor raceways. Surface mounted raceways, we have metallic, non metallic, and we have multi outlet assembly that we can use in a heavily, uh, heavily utilized electrical applications. Any comments, any questions? So that's basically what this is. Um, I'm going to, the last thing, guys, talk about fire alarm system. I'm going to spare you the hassle. I want to show you just a little bit if you guys follow with me. Here's your fire alarm panel here. From the fire alarm panel, it's tied to it a photo detector as well as ionization detector. These are your smoke detectors. Then you have a heat detector. Then you have a dual monitor module that can monitor something, whatever you want it to monitor. We have a photo and heat here. So all these are devices, interface, duct smoke detector, pulse stations. I want to spare you talk about this in details, guys, as we move on to the fire alarm system. And right here, you can have interface between the strobes and the horns, initiating devices, annunciating devices. Um, so that's the, the last thing that we talk about this in this chapter is a little bit about the fire alarm system. I'm going to spare you the hassle of this because not next week, during the, the week after, we will be talking about every component of these in a little bit more details. But if you want to summarize it right now, you're going to have a fire alarm panel here. You have initiating devices, which is the smoke detectors, the heat detectors, the pulse station, and mounting devices, which is the horn strokes. Done. Cool. Okay. Um, I wanted to, before I let you guys go now, and I'm going to just flash the NEC code book for you because we haven't done that, um, and go directly into um, right in here. Here's my, um, here's my um, uh, multi outlet assembly. Multi outlet assembly, I want you guys to look at the use. Use is permitted. The use of multi outlet assembly shall be permitted in dry location. That's it. So, a dry location, a multi outlet assembly. Um, non metallic extension, I'm going to skip that one and go all the way to surface, uh, surface metal raceways. Here's your surface metal raceways, my friends. Uh, we have uh, use is permitted for surface raceways. If you can see in dry location, you can actually use them in hazardous location. Um, under raised floor, you can use them, no problem. Use is not permitted when they are subject to severe physical damage or the voltage is higher and so forth. But my point is that I want to su summarize is right in here. I don't know if you guys can see that. This is one of the most important things in surface mounted raceways, that section right in here, where it tells you, uh, where is the 30? Chain chain conductors shall not apply if you have adjustment factor. Uh, should not apply if we have more up to 30, 30 conductors. Okay, right here. Can you guys see that? This is where it tells you you can put up to 30 conductors in the raceway, metallic raceways, without the rating. We talked about this one. So that's directly from the code. There's a restriction though. If you are to use this, then you can't fill it more than 20%. You fill, and it has to be uh, a raceway exceeds the square inch of the raceway has to exceed this amount, four inches. Um, so, can I splice in it? Yeah, no problem. You can splice. Please don't exceed 75% when you splice. So that's directly from the NDC code. These are what I want you to know about these raceways. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand that one. That's it. That's for the raceways. Um, okay, the non-metallic ones, uh, uh, the non-metallic ones, the same thing if you guys look at the uses permitted. Uses permitted shall be used in dry location. Um, the only thing I want to bring to your attention, guys, is right here. Um, oh, the ambicity, the ambicity, we talked about size of conductors. Um, number of conductors, the number of conductors have to be specified by the manufacturer, of course, for all of them. Um, and the ambicity for these guys, it doesn't tell you anything about the ambicity. Then if you go more than three conductors in non-metallic, you have to do it. That's the drawback of non-metallic. You go more than three carrying carrying conductors. In non-metallic, you do it. In metallic, how many? 30. Do you see the drawback of the non-metallic? Anybody knows why the non-metallic are kind of, they don't allow you to put much in them? They are non-metallic. They don't handle the heat, right? They, as much, as much. Like you put metallic versus non-metallic. Every time you have metallic, you don't have problem with heat with metallic. You can argue that one. Um, okay, raceways. Jeff, if I have a surface mounted raceway, can I go through this block concrete, concrete block, or can I? 
Yes, you can, as long as you don't have a section inside the block. So if there's a section that's going to be creating a, a junction section or something, you can go. So this part of the race, we can easily go from wall to wall. No problem. Through the wall. As long as you don't have a section, um, like a junction box or something, in the wall. Cool? So that's what I wanted to show you guys in terms of um, race waste. In terms of race waste. Any comments, any questions, my friends? Any comments, any questions? Okay, if uh, if you guys don't have any comments, can I can I give you five minutes and I'm going to go over chapter 10, very even simpler than that one, and uh, we'll, then we'll let you work on other things. Cool?